This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, chase and see that the Lord is good. Oh, it's good to see all of you in the house of the Lord just one more time. I pray God bless you all uh, this week. That God has kept you. That God has protected you. That God has covered you. Even right now. And so God, we pray even right now uh, that you bring down your anointing afresh. That you touch each and every one of us in a mighty way. Lift us up. Heal us. Make us whole for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, somebody. want to thank all those who are on Zoom, Brother Sam and Miss Sir, and all the willing workers, which is all of you, who make ministry possible. The past is just a figurehead, but but I thank God to be surrounded around a bunch of gifted people that allows the ministry to continue because of your belief, your faith, and your gift to the body of Christ. I'm gonna, not going to be before you long, but I'm going to be strong. I, I, um, I was looking at an incidental passage of scripture found in the book of Judges, the book of Judges, um, chapter three, book of Judges, chapter three, verses 31. And the book of Judges, chapter three, read, verse 31, read, after him, was Shamgar, the son of Anath, who killed 600 men of the Philistines with an ox bow. And, and he also delivered Israel. Amen, somebody. This is the word of God for the people of God. And as I, I, I read this obscure passage, just 21 words in the book of Judges about a man who was, who was a hero in Israel that nobody talks about, that nobody references in Bible study, that, that many historians have overlooked. Let's look at this man, Shamgar, and see what God does to most unlikely people to do his will. Let us pray. Father God, even right now, we know that you're God, and there's no God beside you, and we thank you. We thank you, God, that you didn't have to do it, but you did it. You died on Calvary, that you might have a right to eternal life, and we say thank you. God, right now, said, worn down, that you might be lifted up, glorified, magnified. And that when it all said and done, let somebody be touched, healed, set free, and delivered by your word. This is your servant's prayer. Amen. Looking at this obscure text, if I had to pin a tag or a title to this, this pericope of 21 words, it would be use what you have where you are. Use what you have where you are. This, this, this man, Shamgar, there's not a lot written about him in scripture. This man, Shamgar, he goes down in modern biblical history as one of the judges of Israel. And Shamgar wasn't always a judge. Shamgar was a farmer first. 
He was humble. He was industrious. And he was faithful and he believed in the Lord. And I've come to realize in my professional life as a furniture maker, for some people, they see that as a hobby. For some people, they see that as insignificant. For some people, they see it as something to do. But if you look around everywhere you are, you have to sit down. There's nowhere you can go in an empty space where there's not a chair. Somebody had to make some furniture that you're sitting on. All of us will be sitting on the floor right now. And so I say this to say that where you may or other folk may think a person's skill or profession is insignificant, there is some significance to that profession, to that man or woman, and to that life. And so I say this morning to those who sometimes feel insignificant, for those who feel overlooked, God has not overlooked your gifts, your talents, your grace, your blessings upon the body of Christ. Your name may not be called. Your may not, name might not be on a program, but you're on God's program. Amen, somebody. Everything and everybody in, in, in Sharp Street, are, they are, are significant. Everything you do is significant to the body of Christ. And sometimes, there are names that are called on a regular basis. There are names who are called um, who do outstanding work. And to God be the glory for those individuals. We, we thank God for them. But then there are some folk who, in their humility, don't want their name called. They don't have to say, I did this. I spent that. I Because they doing what they did for the Lord. And I've been taught that only what you do for Christ, amen, will last. Not for man, not for woman, but for Christ will last. This man, this man, Shamgar, he's a farmer in the Canaanite community. Joshua has come into the promised land, but Joshua is still faced with enemies on the periphery of the promised land. Biblical history tells us that the Philistines are the enemies of the children of Israel. The Phoenicians are the enemies of the children of Israel. And although God has allowed Joshua to go into the land and conquer the land, he only conquered the inner circle, the inner periphery of that land, the intersection of that land, but on the outskirts of that promised land were enemies waiting, and they were waiting to attack the children of Israel. History tells us that as long as the children of Israel work with each other, pray with each other, live with each other, help each other, the enemies. The enemies couldn't come in. It was, it was only when the, 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 the children of Israel in the promised land began to fight among themselves, argue among themselves, backbite among themselves, stab each other in the back and, 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 and deceive one another that the enemy could get in. When I think about this word tithing, tithing did not start with money. 
Amen, somebody. In the, in the promised land, I can already say the holy land, but in the promised land, when God delivered the children of Israel after that generation had died in the wilderness for their lack of faith in God, God said to this people, you cannot see the promised land. You're going to have to wander in the wilderness until all of you die. Moses is dead. God raises up Joshua. They go into the promised land. They go into the promised land, although it's a promised land, it's promised to them, but the promise is not just given to them. When they go into the holy land, they have, in the promised land, they have to fight to claim and secure, even though God promised it to them. When they get into the promised land, nobody wanted to do business with them. Nobody wanted to sell them ox, cow, whatever the natural resources that they need. And this is where tithing actually came in. Where, where, where God says, take your 10%, take your tithe and bring it into my storehouse that I might have meat in my house, meaning that, that, that every family that was in the promised land, their first crops, wheat, corn, whatever they, whatever they grew, whatever they harvest, their, their fish, their, 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 their poultry, their, their, their chickens, but, you know, their calves, whatever they had, every family had to bring a tithe. Every family had to bring a gift to the storehouse. When they did that, a thousand people bringing bundles of wheat and placing in the storehouse allowed everybody to eat. A thousand people bringing goats and and cows and and food that meant that everybody ate. And so, whenever uh, uh, somebody needed something in the community, they could go among themselves and become self-subsisting, and nobody went without. That tithing principle was created in the promised land because of the fact that the outsiders, enemies, Phoenicians, Jebusites, the Gerasites, the Amorites, nobody wanted to do business with the children of Israel. And they wanted to starve them out. They wanted to crush, kill, and destroy them like the devil does. But as long as they stayed unified, as long as they prayed, as long as they uh, loved on one another, the enemy couldn't get in. But when we come to Judges uh, 3, chapter 3 and verse 31, uh, we find this incidental scripture of a man named Shamgar, the son of Anath, a farmer. He's a farmer in the promised land during the time of the disunity of the children of Israel, of the fighting and the backbiting, of the cussing and the fussing and the, the, the mistrust and of, of one another. And those spies from the camps of the Philistines and those spies from the camps of the Phoenicians heard it, saw it, and they descended 
upon the children of Israel. And because he was a farmer on the outskirts of, 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 of town of, uh, in the promised land, they attacked him first. He's a farmer who was not military trained. He's a farmer that's in touch with nature and with his family. And yet, the Philistines descends upon him. And he has no sword. But verse 31 says, all he has is an ox gold. What is an ox gold? An ox gold is an instrument. It's like a stick or a, a, a plowing hole that it, 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 it guides the oxen to tread the field. They really, it's a stick that they really hit the ox with. And sometimes uh, uh, they, on, on the other end of the stick, they use it as a hole to dig up uh, some of the earth to plant the seed or plant the corn. A man who was not military trained, who had faith in God, used what he had where he walked. And I stopped by to tell somebody this morning that sometimes you're placed or we're placed in a situation where we can only use what we have. Sometimes life comes to us in such a way uh, that we have no control over. It. And we need to use what God has blessed us with. And for many of us, when we are afflicted, with pain, afflicted, with heartache, afflicted, with heartbreak, with afflicted, with situations, all we can do is use what God has given us and God has given us prayer. Amen, somebody. Sometimes all we can do is pray. And when we pray, God then fights our battle because Paul tells us the weapons of our warfare are not common, but they are mighty to the pulling down of stronghold. We use what we have. Sham God, he takes his ox gold and he skillfully fights these men with swords. But it was something about his fighting that needs to be looked at and commended. The Bible says that the spirit of the Lord was on sham God, meaning that, that, that we don't fight on our own. We fight with the knowledge of knowing that we serve a God that looks high, that sits high and looks low. We serve a God who said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We serve a God that fight our battle. And you know, Brother Darrell, when I realized something, you know, Paul tells us to, that to put on the armor and in putting on this this armor, he describes the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, sword of truth, feet shod with the with the with the with the preparation of the gospel. But he never says, put on the back plate. Good God, great God Almighty. That is because God wants us to fight and not retreat. God wants us to fight, whatever our situation is, God wants us to fight and then and then not only fight, but 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 fight while He's fighting for us. The reason why 
Paul never said a back plate is because God got our back. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. We are fighting, but God fights the greater fight. And we use what we have in our hand. In this case, Shamgar had an ox gold. Moses, standing at the Red Sea, God said to him, use the staff that you have with your hand. And when Moses placed that staff in the water, water spread it six miles apart because he used what he had in his hand. Samson, fighting against the Philistines, used what you have in your hand. And the Bible says that he took a jawbone of an ax and he destroyed the Philistines. David, what do you have in your hand? God gave him a slingshot to fight against Goliath. Use what you have in your hand. And if God blesses it, God will bring you through it. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but guess what? God has allowed you to make a way out of no way. When I think about my grandmother, sometimes food got, got kind of low in our, in, in, in our house. For some odd reason, she could, she, could, she, could, she, could, she could whip up fish and fried potatoes. She could, she could take stale, she could take bread and some stale bread and, 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 and wind up making dumplings. She, she used what she, hey man, somebody had what she had in her hands. And, and I stopped by to tell somebody that there's always darkness before dawn, but, but joy come up in the morning. Uh, your situation ain't gonna always be what it is, but you gotta use what you have in your hand. You got to keep on praying. You gotta keep on fasting. You gotta keep on seeking God. And, and you know, I thought about something in my closing uh, the gold, the ox gold, really had a point on one end. And it had a metal uh, apparatus on the other end to dig up dirt. But if I was to look at that in the modern sense, and I've been through some situation, I look at my pencil, I look at my pen, and I see it as an ox gold. And I stopped by to tell somebody this morning, every now and then, when you're going through your situation, maybe, just maybe, you have to take out your pen or your pencil and you go into the word of God and you sit down and you begin to write your favorite Bible verse. It'll help you get through your situation. Maybe, just maybe, you write down, I can do all things through Christ. Amen, somebody that strengthens me. Maybe, just maybe, you write down, Ah, that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the enemy come up against me, they, they, they stumble and they fall. Maybe, just maybe, whatever your Bible verse is, you take time with the Lord. Pull out your favorite verse. When nobody else answers the phone call and nobody else that you can talk to, not your spouses, not your children, but, but you need to, to talk to the Lord in that most obscure situation, in that most threatening time, fearful time, uh, 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 uncertain time, and go to the word of God and pull out those scriptures that give you comfort. Sham God, he used what he had. He didn't have much, but if God blesses it, if God blesses it, that little becomes much. Amen, somebody. Some of you are living witness 
Come on, somebody. You have not always had what you had. When you look back on the, over your life and the successes that you have right now, hey man, somebody, you can remember when you were faithful over a few things. Hey man, somebody, and God made you ruler over much. This obscure passage of scripture this morning says to those who feel insignificant, you're significant. You mean more to us in the body of Christ than you know. You mean more to your family than you know. You mean more to your job than you know. You mean more to your community than you know. And I want Sharp Street to know we mean more to, Up to, to Upton, to Drew Hill, to Edding, to Pennsylvania Avenue than more then you don't. I rode through there the other day and I saw some homeboys of mine who still out there in need of Christ. And they said, well, when y'all are going to open up again? I said, well, there are COVID numbers right now, but we're still praying for you. And so God, right now, we place Upton in our prayer. We ask God even right now that you lift up bow down here, even right now. Right now, God, we ask that you still provide. Right now, God, God, we ask that you still comfort those who are still seeking those red doors to be open. God, right now, we thank God for our Sharp Street family for ministry and action. We thank God for their significance on that corner. Because I realize that even in our absence, folks still need us. For your word, for your prayers, for your, for your communion, for your hymns. So I stopped by this morning as I close to tell my church family, I can't do it without you. No pastor is as great as his congregation. And I thank God even right now for the gifts abundant in Sharp Street. And God bless each and every family that's on Zoom even right now who use where they are, what they have for your glory. And that they are not significant, but they are mighty in the body of Christ. And for that, I'm humble for that. I'm grateful for that. I'm thankful. God, right now, thank you for our leaders. Thank you for our officers. Thank you for our steadfast members. Thank you for continued prayer. Thank you for midday meditation. Thank you for Sarah's house. Thank you for, 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 for all that they have done and they do. Thank you for the ideas to do your will, to better somebody else's life. They're not significant. They're not insignificant, but they're significant. And for that, God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. Thank you, Lord, that you kept our members, that you are keeping us from hurt, harm, or danger. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If I had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to say, say thank you. But I thank you for this church on the corner with these awesome members who may sometimes feel insignificant. And I stop by the day as the pastor to say that you are all significant, that you are all needed, that you are all wanted, that we can't do without you. For the glory of the Lord. And although Sham God goes down in biblical history as an individual with just 21 words, he meant more to the kingdom of God 
than all of the judges in Israel. And in my closing, you all mean more than any, any preacher, any pastor, any, what my grandfather said, highfalutin individual. Because it is not for you, not for your steadfastness, your prayer, your consistency. We wouldn't be where we are. Thank God for your significance. Thank God for you. I love you. And guess what? In my book, maybe Sham God goes down as someone in obscurity. But wherever I go, whether it be the way to school or at a conference, I brag on my church and I brag on the people in my church because it's not for them. I wouldn't be better. You make me better. You make me, you make me better. And for that, I'm the better for it because of your witness to what you do. May God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Use what you have where you are for the glory of God. And it will not go down in obscurity, but it will be significant in the body of Christ. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Amen, somebody. Amen.